Hello and welcome to episode two of Mod School. I'm your, uh, I guess, modder, <laughs> Chris Takahashi, and with me is Ronya Monto. Well done. Did I say this? Almost, <laughs> almost <laughs> correctly. That was a very Japanese pronunciation of Monto. Oh, Monto. Was it? <laughs> Monto. <laughs> I was going f more for the, the sexy voice rather than the accent this time. Oh, I see. Okay. Ronya. <laughs> you remember that? Yes, I remember Ronya. that. That was kind of frightening, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it could be both frightening and sexy. I guess if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> but you're obviously not. No. Uh, well, maybe. Let, let's not that talk guy, about what I'm into. <laughs> yeah, that guy did sound like he was a bit on the creepy side. Yeah, just a little bit, but you know. Yeah. Or just maybe he just like chain smokes a lot. And he's like one of those guys from like those film noir movies in the 50s. Oh, yeah. In black of and course. white. Of yeah. course. And um, today's episode, before we just blather on forever is about well let me start over last episode we covered how to make an actor and place him into the world make an npc and place him into the world in today's episode we're going to focus on giving that actor some dialogue mm. so let's load up our mod that we made last time uh bros forever Bros forever. I'm gonna make a little song out of it. Bros forever. Yeah. Hanging out in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> so the mod has loaded magically in like one second. Yay! Um, normally it takes longer, but through the magic of video editing, it happened very quickly. I know. It's... So as you remember from. Oh, what were you gonna say? Uh, I, I was just gonna <laughs> say it's I... magical. Go ahead. Yes. We are basically magicians. Um, if you recall from our previous episode, we had um, we gave our mod a prefix of B R O Z for bros, and if you notice, if I filter by bros, it will show all the stuff we made last time. But today we are going to make dialogue, and dialogue goes into this section called quest. Now, obviously, that's a little bit confusing for people. Like, they'll think when you say quest, you think it's only for quests, right? Yeah. But in the CK, quest just basically stands for any type of dialogue. It doesn't have to be for quests. It can also be for just simple hellos. Yeah, exactly. It's really weird, but you get used to it, I suppose. Yeah. So you right-click, it's new, and we're going to give our um, quest slash dialogue an id so bros base dialogue using the same prefix now in the quest data tab you'll see a lot of this um stuff right now the most important thing that we want to have checked off is this box here start game enabled which basically ensures that this quest or this dialogue is running the moment the player starts their game right if we uncheck the box, none of the dialogue will run until you start the quest. Right. So sometimes you have quest dialogue that you don't want to start right away. You kind of want to hide it. Um, so you uncheck this box and then you start it via a trigger or you start it via some other piece of dialogue. But this particular dialogue, we want to have it start right away. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we want to note is priority. Uh, priority basically determines which dialogue has priority over another. So, for example, um, if you want a certain set of hellos to only happen, let's say, um, when a person's not following, right? Mm -hmm. And some dialogue to happen when a person is a follower. Well, which dialogue would you have higher priority? Uh, the not follower dialogue. The, that is incorrect. Oh. <laughs> you would want, when someone is following you, you would want that follower, 
dollar like to eh, follower dial like to have higher priority so it takes so they're not saying their base hellos and greets while they're following you yeah but you don't want them to say the follower hellos when they're not following you true but that's why we have the next section here <laughs> quest dialogue conditions oh i see so let's say this is uh, dialogue that you want to have for a follower you can put get in faction current companion faction and set it to one mm -hmm. which is yes and zero equals no so you are right in a way you could do it backwards as well like let's say we set this priority to a hundred so it has priority over every other dialogue including follower dialogue how would we change our conditions to make sure this dialogue doesn't spew out when you're a follower. Well, I usually just make all the dialogue like location specific. So <laughs> they only uh -huh. spew this stuff if they have followed you to that location. So if they're just uh -huh. chilling in but their see own that? Head. Yes. Right, but see that is an example of working harder. Oh. We want to work smarter. Oh. We can have one condition sort of eliminate the possibility of this dialogue happening when you're a follower and that's by using this condition get in faction current companion faction and setting it to zero so now this entire quest will only run if and only if brosef is not a follower okay that makes does perfect that make sense. sense yes it makes perfect sense <laughs> all right so that's an example of a quest condition for the entire quest but as you mentioned uh, we could also set conditions on individual pieces of dialogue but we'll get to that later yeah um, we're going to go to the next tab now you notice there's only five tabs here this is sort of something weird about the creation kit you have to kind of hit okay and then go back into it mm, before it realizes oh I can we can actually yeah. do more stuff <laughs> yes it's it's very I, I don't know it's very shy the creation kit is kind of like oh you know you kind of have to like get to know it a little yeah, bit better yeah you need to give it a name and yeah stuff oh that's true before it'll talk to you you need to sort of give it a name yes. and let's let's do that now this is the base this is um this quest name section is more for just cataloging the the id is probably more important but it's just to um for example base dialogue for Brosef. So you notice I use normal grammar here. Mm. I, I usually just leave uh, that empty though. <laughs> you can. Um, but the problem with doing that is if this were an actual quest, this is the name of your quest. Of course, but since it's just dialogue, it doesn't need Right, that. right, right. Um, but see, you see the name here on the name column to the yes. right? Yes. But um, for example, if we search by ms01 you'll notice that the name of the quest is here kid in the fridge <laughs> these are some fallout quests um wasteland refrigerator here there be monsters these are some fallout miscellaneous quests you'll notice how the editor id section has a sort of um acronym mm. more or less yeah. and the name of the quest is actually there right let's go back to bros so we looked at the quest data tab. Next is quest stages. Now, since this is an actual quest, um, we normally wouldn't have stages. Um, so we'll go and cover this later. Same with quest objectives. Um, quest aliases. Now, this is something a little bit different than Skyrim. In Skyrim, you didn't really need to fill out aliases. Aliases were more for scenes. Right and running AI packages and things like that. But in Fallout, every piece of dialogue is pretty much a scene, every conversation piece at least. Right. So we're going to need to use this tab, but we'll go back to that later. Player dialogue, this is kind of um, a remnant of Skyrim. This is where all the dialogue used to be for previous Bethesda games. Mm. Skyrim, Morrowind, um, Fallout 3... Fallout New Vegas, all the dialogue was placed here. And if you recall, that dialogue sort of locked you into a conversation. Mm. 
And so you could tell the difference between scenes and regular dialogue because the player dialogue would lock you in and you would actually have to tab out to get out, right? Yeah. Um, but now, all dialogue, um, command dialogue is more like a different type of player dialogue. But now, all dialogue is put into scenes. And with scenes, you have more player freedom. Um, this is why in Fallout 4, even if you're in a conversation, you can just turn around and walk away. Right. And it's because um, Fallout 4 does its conversations via scenes. Um, scene collections, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> Combat is um, another type of player dialogue. It's just put in a different section. Same as favors. Basically, what it comes down to is there's a lot of different categories for dialogue but they basically break down into two sections the dialogue that is part of a conversation and the dialogue that is part of just people spitting out one-liners like idols yeah. greets um combat dialogue that falls into that category where they're just kind of just spitting out lines as opposed to conversing with someone yeah it's not something you really respond to necessarily it's just do you go to the cloud right. district very often? Of course yeah, you don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is an example of a greet, which we will add to Brosef first. So if you look, I went to the miscellaneous tab. Now, see, there's all these little minor categories that are for this stuff. For hellos and greets, you want to go to miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. And you right-click, new topic, and you'll see there's a lot of different specific types of dialogue we want greeting. This is a little bit confusing because there's both a hello and a greeting. We want greeting. What's the difference? Hellos aren't attached to scenes more. They're they're sort of they they kind of just spit out um if you're in the vicinity of a person. Oh. Greetings do the same thing, but they also are tied to scenes and conversations. They can initiate a conversation. Right, okay. So, so greetings can more or less do two things, where hellos are, can only do one. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so why use the thing, why use hellos when we can use greetings for both is more or less what I'm saying here. Hmm. So, um, and I'll give you an example of, of how they can be used differently. So first, we're going to right-click and put new. So what should Brosef say when you click on him? Uh, hey man, do we have any nachos? <laughs> okay, nice. Hey man, do we have any nachos? You know we don't have nachos in Finland. You don't? No, I just... Well, you don't really have much Mexican food, do you? <laughs> kind of, we have those... What are they called? Burritos? Probably not. Quesadillas? <laughs> Tacos? Tacos? Tacos. That's Tacos. Mexican, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, I could never live in Finland then. Oh. I need my Mexican food. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, so, hey man, do we have any nachos? And you can double click on the response text and get a separate window. And here's where we have our animation face archetypes and you're gonna like this look how many different animation emotions we can use compared to skyrim oh my gosh skyrim had like five yeah so the one if you notice we have some weird ones too like sturgis and i think there's piper i have no idea what those do I... but we're gonna use question oh all oh, right because he's asking us a question right yes yeah. exactly now you notice there's a bunch of voice types. Um, that's because we haven't set a condition yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he. And here in our condition section. Oh, go ahead. He he needs his own voice type too. Have we done that already? I believe we have. Oh yes, we did it last time. Right. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no worries. And so condition function get is id is basically the base condition that we use for most things, and we're gonna type bros. And immediately go to bros brosef and this line will work um, we also want to click random here because we're gonna make a couple of different voices right. uh, or greetings we can also if we want to ensure our greetings don't repeat we can use this hours until reset so if you don't want it to say it um, 
until another 24 hours has passed, you can type in 24 hours. Right. So he doesn't just go, do we have any nachos? Do we have any nachos? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the other thing we can do is make a second greeting. Hey, bro. We're going to make this uh, just a regular type greeting. Hey, bro. And we can highlight both, right click, and make an info group. And now this is a, a whole group of greetings. We can double click on that and force all children random. <laughs> okay. And do all before repeating. This is a nice new feature, I think, in the new, new CK where we can have all the children be random and have this box where it says do all before repeating. Right, 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 right. So they have to go through every greeting before they start over. Exactly. Oh. And so we have it, um, the random box checked and we don't need to do the hours until reset because he'll go through both before repeating. Huh. That makes sense. Yeah. And it's once per game. So if you exit... If you greet him, he says, hey, bro. If you exit the game and come back, he might say, hey, bro, again. Oh. Uh, so the, it keeps track of the um, this do all before repeating. It resets every time you exit Fallout 4. Well, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, so you still might need to use certain tricks to kind of keep it from repeating if you exit the game a lot. I don't know. Mm. Not sure why you would. Yeah, but... I, I don't think that matters that much. <laughs> now, here's another thing. Notice how both these greets are gender uh, toward a male protagonist. Oh, think, yeah. Hey man. hey, man and hey, bro. Although some would argue that hey, man and hey, bro are gender neutral. <laughs> yes. Especially if you're like Brosef and just use those words casually. Exactly. Uh, but just for the purpose of this exercise, let's make a let's right click and copy, and let's make a hey sis. <laughs> hey sis. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, how do we condition for gender? Oh, uh, we have to check the player's gender somehow. Right. So right click. We'll add a new condition, and get is sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these it's conditions very sound forward great. At times. Get it yes. six. <laughs> <laughs> the creation kit sometimes is very shy at first, but once you get to know it, it's like get his sex. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, oh. that's how it rolls. You'll notice there's a ton of conditions like that you can use in order to help determine things. Uh, get is flying. Get is ghost. <laughs> get is flying. So, that that one interests me. I mean. <laughs> um, do you fly in Fallout 4? You do have jetpacks. Really? But you don't, yeah, but you don't talk to people while they're... Weird. While they're flying. But let's say you want them to comment while you're flying. Get is flying might be a valid condition oh, in that case. Oh, yes, that makes sense. Plus, conditions could be used for other things besides dialogue. So you may at some point want to check if someone's flying. I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe at some point a developer was like, we need a condition for this because I want to check for this. And then so they added it to the creation kit. Of course. Yes. Oh, I'm sure everything so, has a, a very good reason. <laughs> yeah. So um, we added get is sex male equals one. But this is very important. A common mistake. Who do we want to run this condition on? Uh, because she, he, <clears throat> he is saying, hey sis, we need to make sure that it's female equals one. Because that means... Because now it's pointing to male, right? Ah, uh, right, right. That first. Yes, that first. <laughs> female. Yes. But who are we running it on? Uh, player, right? Exactly. See, see, player, I'm not completely yeah, stupid. Yeah, there you go. Play target also works, but obviously in in this case we we want to be sure and go player 
target could also be used for if two NPCs are talking to each other and you want to have them refer to their target, um, that would work for that. In this instance, the target is the player, so that's why target would work. But mm -hmm. whenever you're referencing the player, I think it's always best to just run on player. Okay. And so we're going to we're gonna check um, the sex of the player. How do we run it on the subject? We check the sex of the subject. Right. But we want it to run on player. And the thing is, it defaults to subject, so that's why we want to make sure we change that. So now our target is female. He'll say, hey, sis. Let's use this arrow button to go to the previous one and add if the player is male. Hey, bro. And we're, we'll leave hey, man, gender, gender neutral. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. Okay, so we have three greetings. Clicking on them will say one of these three greetings. Let's say we want to have one of these greetings lead to a conversation. Hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, conversations are now held in scenes, all conversations. In the past, scenes were just used for NPC to NPC conversations. Right. But now the player too uses scenes. So let's go to scenes. Let's create a right, right, right click and new bro based dialogue scene 01. That's the ID. Mm hmm. Um, you'll see all these boxes. We'll leave these alone for now. Um, let's right click new actor and you'll notice we don't have any option other than the player. Hmm. And that's because we need to add a quest alias. And this is how the creation kit sort of pulls actors for scenes or pulls NPCs for scenes. They need to have a quest alias. So right click new reference alias and we need to make one for bros Seth. And here is where we can hit a lot of tabs or check a lot of boxes. What I usually do is click optional. <laughs> you can make them essential, you can make them protected here. Uh, allow dead, allow disabled. So let's say you want to have a quest alias, but initially Brosef is disabled. If you don't check this allow disabled box, the quest alias won't fill. Right. It won't work, more or less. You have to make sure you check this allow disabled box um, if they're disabled. If they're dead, you have to make sure this allow dead box is checked. Um, but for now, we'll just check these three boxes. These are really unnecessary though for what we're doing. So just for the sake of to show people that it's unnecessary, we're going to uncheck them. Oh, okay. <laughs> I usually just do it out of habit <laughs> because just in case later on I want to disable them, later on I want to kill them, or um, later on I, I want to make them optional, I just check them because there's no harm in doing so. Okay. Um, but in this case, it's unnecessary, so we won't do it because Brosef isn't disabled, he's there. He's not dead, and we want to make him mandatory, so <laughs> we're not going to check the optional box. Um, you can basically just go to Unique Actor, find Bros, Brosef, and he has to be unique for him to show up in this column, and hit OK. Okay. So now we have an alias, Brosef. Mm-hmm. And what the game will do is the game will search for a unique actor, Bros Brosef, in the world, grab his ref ID, and then put it into the quest. Does that make sense? Nope, but uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. <Okay. laughs> Another thing uh, we could do in aliases is we can give them specific AI packages too. We could give them special factions. We can basically alter the NPC on top of the stuff we did last time. Um, so like, let's say we want to give him a special faction, but only during this quest, while this quest is active, Okay. right? We can give him the factions, uh, we could give him the faction here instead of on his base actor. Right, so it's temporary. Right, as long as the quest is running, 
let's say let's put him in the alien faction. Oh. Right? As long as this quest is running, he'll be in the alien faction. But once the quest turns off, he'll be removed from that faction automatically. Right. So basically, yeah, you could do a lot with that, actually. Hmm, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, so you can actually give him... Like, let's say he's in a quest, and we'll cover this more later on, but let's say he's in a quest, and we want him to follow the player only during the quest. Well, we can right-click, add a package. Let's search for a default package. Follow player. That's pretty straightforward. Um, but now if we add the package to his alias as opposed to his you know actor the npc stuff that we covered last time mm -hmm. his uh he will only follow the player while this quest is active right. then we turn the quest off and at that point the follow package will no longer function right so it's pretty handy to have this separate section to control npc behavior and edit their factions um, during a quest. Mm -hmm. But of course, this quest, if you recall, is start game enabled. So it will always run. Yeah, so maybe we right should not start. make him follow the player constantly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I removed that. And the point is, we now have an alias of Brosef. So if we go back to scenes, now let's add an actor. And now Brosef is here. Cool. Yay. And first thing we want to do is add a right click add phase at end. So we have a phase and we have a scene. Um, there are two ways of going about this. You can hit the player dialogue button and it will immediately add a greeting. Um, and you can double click on this and it'll add a new greeting. But since we already have a greeting, let's go back to the miscellaneous tab. And let's go to, hey man, do we have any nachos? Double click on that. And you notice there's uh, boxes here. Mm -hmm. Start scene. So let's oh. select the scene we just made. Yeah. I see. And we have a phase of none. But when it's none, it's just going to start the next phase. Right. So we hit OK. We go to scene. And let's add a new action to continue this greeting and we're going to add a player dialogue package and hit OK for now let's let's OK out of this so our first action is going to have four responses if you're familiar with fallout 4 there's four types of responses there is a positive response a negative response which mm -hmm. is the right arrow i believe a neutral response which is the left arrow and a question response which is the up arrow on right. the wheel right 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 so all of this you had to do manually in skyrim if you wanted like different types of responses but this is right because in skyrim we use this player dialogue tab. Yeah. It was a little bit different. We didn't use scenes. What we would do in Skyrim is uh, we would add new editor ID topics in this column here. Mm -hmm. And then we would attach the greeting to the new topics. Yeah. In Fallout, since we do it all through scenes, um, they have this sort of new section here where we have the positive negative neutral question type thing hmm. but another important thing to note which we'll cover later is because we're in scenes we can also add AI packages to these scenes okay so we can have players move while they're talking but more on that later first let's add a positive response so uh, the original question was what hey man do we have any nachos <laughs> So this is the player's positive response. Um, we could add a custom response here by saying, no, we don't have any fucking nachos, you, <laughs> you fucking freeloader. <laughs> and let's add the appropriate emotion, angry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now... If you played Fallout 4, 
the other thing we need to note is there's also like an abbreviated text to click on, right? Uh-huh. That goes here in the prompt. So, no, we don't have nachos. So you notice there's a character limit of 80, but we also kind of want to make it a little bit shorter than that, just because it looks funny on the screen if the whole text is there. Yeah. So we kind of just abbreviate it, give a little terse version of the actual dialogue. Correct. Uh, and then we hit OK. Now this runs into a problem, obviously, of we don't have the voice acting for this, right? Yeah. So you can leave that alone. Um, or we can try, uh, actually, let me, let me go back and talk about this response. Now, this is kind of an angry response, right? Uh-huh. This is not a positive <laughs> response, if you notice. It's, no, it's, it's not. It's a negative yeah. response. We, yeah, we kind of put it in the wrong section, right? Oops. So we have to fix that. So right-click move to topic info group so we want negative custom see there's npc positive negative neutral question so we want negative custom so let's move that there ah there you go yeah it's kind of handy yeah let's move this to positive so um a positive response so let's try and kind of work around the fact that we don't have voice acting so let's Put a special prompt here of impersonate Brosef's voice. <laughs> oh, right. Right, right. So then we could do the voice acting ourselves. Um, nah, bro. Nah, bro. But this is positive, so we want to say, nah, bro. Wish we did. Man, nachos are cool. <laughs> That's perfect. And and um, we want friendly as a as an archetype. And if you notice in the player voice section, this is for both female and male. But let's say we want a different response for females. We could do the same thing as we did the other time. Okay. We can have one condition for male. And uh, let's say for females, we'll say, nah, bro, but I think there's some tacos in the fridge. You should dig in. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> so helpful. Yeah. Oh, and can you voice this line right now so I can add it in later? Yeah, totally. What was the line? Okay. Nah, bro, but I think there's some tacos in the fridge. You should dig in. Yeah, that's very good. That was good, yeah? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we also want to change this to female equals one. Another thing we can do is change it to male equals zero. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. I, I guess you know we'll why, do that. Yeah. yeah, you know why this is handy? It will cover all genders regardless if you're like female or like oh, yeah. it's as as opposed to just limiting it to female um if you have a mod that gives you a third gender then this condition will cover all your bases oh, that's because it only checks to point. see if you're yeah it only check to see if you're not male mm. um so we have our positive response we have a negative response let us try and find a neutral response. But for this one, we're going to do something different. Let's try and find a shared piece of dialogue that we can pull from the vanilla game, the same way we kind of like look for shared packages and things like that. Uh -huh. So let's go filter by player. Now you notice there are some uh, shared dialogues that we can use. Uh, specifically with bartering, um, with doctors, you'll see there's a player doctor positive, player doctor question, mm -hmm. um, player mutter negative. <laughs> I think player mutter negative might be a good one to look through. Or player mutter neutral. 
Is there a player mutter neutral? Mm. Let's let's filter by mutter. Okay. Oh, there's no neutral. But oh. negative. We'll, we'll go with negative. We'll see. Damn. That's Damn. a little short. Damn, Damn. it. <laughs> okay. No good. <laughs> nope. Hey. <laughs> Nope might work, yeah. right? Yeah, that that actually hey, makes man, sense. Hey man, do we have any notches? Yeah. So here we don't have to kind of pull audio out of the game. We could just use the default dialogue and just put nope. And lastly, question. And let's do the same for this. Let's look for um question dialogue. Let's just put something at random. Uh, no, that doesn't work. No, that definitely does not work. Hmm. Let's just find something at random here. Well, the thing is that this shared dialogue might also be NPC dialogue, so we want to make sure it says player in it. Right. <laughs> okay, or we could just ask him something completely <laughs> random. Is it true there's a secret <laughs> strong room under the mayor's office? I think <laughs> I would actually really love... If you made a, a quest or a character where everything was just completely <laughs> non sequitur or however you pronounce that word, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's do that. Um, one other change we'll make. Uh, is what? What is the word um, for? Oh, this is impersonating Brosa's voice. What is the word for? Um, Speaking without saying a word. Is it miming or Oh gee, uh like where you just How about we just put communicate via telepathy? <laughs> okay, fair enough. So we don't <laughs> so we don't have um uh the actual voice dialogue for this. Or how about we just say co communicate via emotion? Oh, or you could right. just mouth the words where there's no sound, but you're going to... Uh, reading lips? Yeah. Via lip reading? Can you feel we lips? would still need to make a lip sync file for this, um, which we'll do. Oh. <laughs> okay. but <laughs> <laughs> um, So, communicate via lip reading. Ah, I like telepathy better. It's just funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It definitely is. Okay, so now let's let's come up with our responses. Um, nah, bro. Wish we did, man. Nachos are cool. Uh, let's say that sucks, bro. Oh, oh man. Thanks, though. That sucks, bro. Oh, man. Thanks, though. And yeah. let's pick our emotion. Because we were nice to him. Yeah. He's very sad. Some of these are kind of like it's hard to pick one or the other without being sure what they look like. Depressed? <laughs> <Conspiran> <laughs> um, Conspiratorial. I like that one. Yeah. That's great. Uh, I think this one gives him like an evil grin though. That's not what we want. <laughs> no, no. We want him to be like disappointed. Yeah. Depressed. We'll oh, depressed. Yeah, yeah. Now this is um obviously we picked a response for the male response. Let's do one for the non male. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh what what were we saying? We were saying the tacos in the fridge? What was in the fridge? Yeah, tacos, tacos in the fridge and we we told him to dig in. Uh Sweet tacos are cool. <laughs> and for this one, we obviously want him to be happy or yes. grateful. Grateful.
Skull is better. It's so hard to choose. Yeah, it's so hard to choose. There's so many. Skyrim is just like uh, you have to just pick one of the five emotions. Yeah, and like five percent happy <laughs> or one hundred percent happy. Yeah, they're never. They never really actually fit what you're going for. No. Okay. Um, no, we don't have any fucking nachos. Okay, let's do something different for this one. Let's say, when you say this, he's so fucking sad that he just doesn't have any words. Like, the conversation ends right there. Oh, okay. Wow. Let's just, let's just delete it. <laughs> so he doesn't respond, you just walk away. Yeah. Oh. It ends the conversation with the player. Right. We could do the same thing for this one. Nope. Is it true? Uh, <laughs> there's a secret stronghold <laughs> under the mayor's office. <laughs> Whoa, man. Whoa, man. Are you high? <laughs> I was just, I was just about to say, you should, like, <laughs> can I have what some whatever fuck, you're man? on? <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck, man? Can I have... Can I have whatever? Uh, help me out here. Can I have some of whatever you're on? Yeah, can I have? <laughs> Whoa, man. Have some of whatever you're on and pick an emotion. Surprised? Mm, yeah. Or puzzled. Odd? Odd. Oh, Odd, that makes sense. Surprise might work best. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's really hard to tell without actually seeing the emotions. Fair enough. Um, okay. All right, so we have our positive, negative, and neutral question response. But let's say we want to route um, a response back somewhere. Like, let's say we don't want to exit the dialogue uh -huh. after he says something. Like, for example, with a question response, a lot of times you don't leave the dialogue uh, or you don't advance the dialogue. You kind of just stay there, right? Because uh -huh. you're just asking a question. You're not advancing the quest. So what we first need to do is we first need to add a phase. So uh, the nomenclature that the vanilla game uses is loop 01 or loop 02, loop 03. So you can use that. You can also, you, but you can really just put whatever you want here. It's just, it needs a name, more or less. So okay. super happy fun time. Um, so now we have a phase, super happy fun time. And like previously, we need to hit OK. Uh, Creation Kid is being shy again. Oh. Let's save this too. Yeah. No more get a sex for. Creation. Yeah. <laughs> it got after it got its sex, it felt little shame, and now it's shy again. Oh, poor thing. Clearly the creation <laughs> kid had a Catholic upbringing. Yeah. Um, so, now that we hit OK and gone back in, it'll recognize the phase. So let's go back to our question. Whoa, man, can I have some whatever you're on? And we're going to have it start scene. Super happy fun time. And what this will do is once this response finishes, it'll restart the scene at this phase. So it'll go back and loop. Right. And that's what we want. We want it to loop. These other three, though, will just end immediately. Okay. That's because we left it alone. They'll move on to the next phase, but as you'll notice, there is no second phase. Uh-huh. Another important thing, because this is a scene and there's no locked-in dialogue, um, these are scenes where everything is fluid, we need to make sure the NPC stays in place. Because remember, his, he's running his AI packages constantly during a scene. He's not right. going to be locked in and stop like in Skyrim. So what we need to do is we need to right-click a new action and add a package. Okay. And we're going to right-click, add, and search for a stay at self, I think. is the. So we find default stay at self scene. And all this is, if you look at it, it's a vanilla package where you stay near yourself at a radius of zero. It right. basically means you stand still. Yeah. <laughs> it's a travel yeah, so package. So he doesn't walk away. Right. So this is very important um, 
because we're using scenes, we need to make sure they have this AI package attached. So that okay. is a dialogue um, and a conversation. Now we can continue the dialogue by adding new phases. That's amazing. It's very deep conversation. Yeah. Let's say we want to add the spouse of the NPC and interject into this conversation. We need to first add another alias. So here's Brosef, right? Let's just duplicate him for just to make it faster. And let's double click, hit spouse, unique actor. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky because there are two options for spouses, right? It could be male or female, right? Right. I'm not sure how they differentiate between the two, to be honest. Um, let's look at our, let's actually exit out of this and filter by Nora. I wonder if they go by name. You know what? Let's look at the vanilla game. Yeah. This is another example of how it's always good to look at the vanilla game and how they did things to get ideas. So let's look at War Never Changes. And we actually, last episode, we actually had the Brosef talk during the scene with your active spouse, right? Mm -hmm. So let's look at how they did their alias. Active spouse, active spouse. Do you see it? Uh, spouse active male spouse and spouse here. female. Oh, there you go. Active yeah, spouse. and there actually is a unique actor for both. Unique actor MQ101, power player spouse male, player spouse female. We can do this, but you know what else we can do? Mm -hmm. In Fallout 4 is we can actually just borrow an alias from another quest, which is a nice new feature. Oh. So, spouse, external alias reference. Oh, I see. MQ101, active spouse. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yes. So now we don't even have to fill out all the bells and whistles. We're going to let the vanilla game figure out who the active spouse is. All right. And we're going to borrow that ref ID and place it into our quest. Huh. That makes things a lot simpler. Yes, it does. So now let's add a new actor. Let's add the active spouse. And let's right click and add a dialogue option. Yay. Yay. And let's have them face target Brosef. Because they're talking and to him. Yes. If we wanted to head track the player, we could head track the player, but let's have him talk to Brosef. Let's right click, let's add a new dialogue. And let's also filter for something that the player uses. Player negative. Or let's have them mutter something mm -hmm. negative. Oh, these were stupid, huh? Uh-uh. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sweet. Wait, that's positive. <laughs> Nerd rage. <laughs> Son of a motherfucker. I like that. That's perfect. Okay. Okay, so... <laughs> we're going to have them nerd rage out for a second. And this will only happen after... Uh, these three responses because this last one is going to loop let's okay. have them only respond though after a negative so let's do new action npc response npc response dialogue so here, you notice it's similar to the player dialog box, only you only have four options instead of eight, and this is because it's only for the NPC, right? Uh-huh. So 
let's delete the positive neutral and question and let's just have a negative right reply Um, so let's have, actually, let's have her say sweet, or have him say, depending on the gender. What was it, mutter positive? I think so. The filter. Nice. Mm. Or we can have him say nice. <laughs> yeah, that works. So this will only <laughs> um, run... Uh, if they say a negative. So if you say via telepathy, no, we don't have any fucking nachos, you fucking preloader. The spouse will immediately say, nice. <laughs> <laughs> These people are so nice to each other. <laughs> yeah. So, and lastly, um, we don't want them to say nice and then son of a motherfucker, right? Yeah. So what we're going to have to do is end running scene we're going to click this box here end running scene this will stop the scene before he or she says son of a motherfucker okay so now we've effectively had the green and blue dialogue route to this right whereas um the brown dialogue will route to this actually the blue dialogue should route to this as well i think okay so let's let's undelete you press delete and you press delete again you'll undelete oh <laughs> <laughs> so let's do the same here and have them say nice or let's have them say something different got it no got it. yes no. Was it? Oh, there it is sweet there you go. yeah <laughs> so now we also need to hit end running scene for this so there you go you have effectively you have dialogue that ends and you have dialogue that continues via the green section right you could have also put um the son of a mother fucker thing <laughs> here as well in the positive response area but just for demonstration's sake we'll do it this way okay and should we test this in game? I would love to see this in game. <laughs> All right, let's go do that. And at long last, here we are. Finally. Subtitles are on. Everything is ready to go. Okay, let's take a look. Here is Brosef sitting at his chair. Here's our spouse. Now let's first try and see if our greetings work. Excuse me. And you notice that one we didn't voice was a hey bro. That salesman. He comes for you every day. Yeah, bro, can you get that? I'm totally busy watching TV over here. Now that was from last time. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Let's try clicking on him again. Excuse me. Hey man, do we have any nachos? So let's say something random. Is it true there's a secret strong room? Under the mayor's office. Whoa, man. Can I have some of whatever you're on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. And you notice how it routed back perfectly to our original yeah. conversation. Uh, let's communicate via telepathy. Nice. <laughs> and so... <laughs> There we go. It all worked. Come on, just answer the door and he'll go Hi. away. Hey, man. Do we have any nachos? Let's test some of the other options. So let's impersonate yeah. Brosef's voice. Nah, bro. Wish we did, man. Nachos are cool. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> Thanks, though. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Um, it looks like that last line isn't recorded. Um... Or it doesn't apply to the player's voice. Yeah. If that makes sense. That's a shame. There's a different there's a different voice for the player than there is for your spouse, is what I'm saying. So you, oh. you notice how Nora didn't actually no, say anything? He's not gonna give up. It's because yeah. the reason she didn't say anything is because son of a mother bugger or whatever is a player voice, not a spouse voice. Two different people. That's weird. 
But yeah, so it works. Any questions? That's, it, no, that's excellent. Fabulous. So uh, everything works as planned. Um, that's. Honey, do you mind getting the door? Give me a second, Nora. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything works as planned. That's pretty much it for basic dialogue. Um, in our next episode, we're gonna sort of make a mini quest and do a little bit of scripting. Ooh, I'm looking forward to that. Yes. Um, so, uh, if there's nothing else, um, that's it for this episode. Say goodbye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Are you gonna get the door? Right, and tune in next week.